The story of Rasmus is both a happy and sad tale and starts outside a forest cottage in a basket in the rain. Rasmus didn't cry. He laid there quite calmly as he was delivered by a desperate mother and left on a doorstep. She knocked a few times and ran away, brushing the tears off her cheek as she fled into the night. The door was answered by Andalin, the village seer. He was confused at first to see a baby sat atop his doormat, staring back at him, but being a kind and gentle man, he took the baby inside and placed the basket on a wooden chair near the fireplace. What do we have here then? Andalin asked, reaching into the basket and pulling out a blue envelope with a red and gold wax seal shaped like a crested pheasant. He took a knife from the shelf and opened the envelope to reveal a folded handwritten letter. Dear Andalin, I'm so, I'm so sorry, sorry to have to, to, have do, to this do this to you. you. My intention was never to burden you with the responsibility of raising a child not of your own blood, and I'm truly sorry for doing so in such a rushed, uncouth and irresponsible manner. It saddens me deeply to have to bring my child and only son to your doorstep, but desperate times call for desperate measures. My only wish is for you to keep him safe and raise him as your own. I'm unsure of my family's safety in these times and knew, selfishly, you being a great mage and kind soul wouldn't let harm befall such an innocent life. I've included instructions on feeding and education, including his subscription to Skritter, which he must practice twice a day. He's gotten quite good at traditional characters. I cannot, of course, presume anything and wouldn't dare assume that you do not already know these things. I can only hope that you will take good care of my little boy and help him grow up safely in this unsafe and unkind world. Please show, Please him, show the him the kind of things, kind of things we perhaps, we perhaps haven't, haven't seen. seen. Yours faithfully, X. Andalin put the letter down gently on the table with a curious look at the baby. He noticed a red ribbon laced around his neck. Pulling tenderly on the ribbon revealed a golden ring attached to it. He bent down to get a better look and saw an inscription on the side. Rasmus, Andalin said out loud. So that's what we shall call you then. Rasmus stared up with Andalin and almost with a knowing, smiled. To be continued. Hello, 大家好，欢迎来到 Mandarin Monkey 广播时间。Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Mandarin Monkey podcast, episode 182. 第一百八十二集，大家。And、晚上好，早上好，对呀，下午好。Today is a special day、uh, because we have <laughs> Mr. Mark Crilly back on for part two、Yay! of the long-awaited、uh, chat. 对呀，欢迎 Mark Crilly. Hey, Mark. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> 欢迎回来。Lots of people really enjoyed the first one. 对呀。Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I had a ball. Yeah, we had a we had a, a bunch of、uh, interesting comments. Some from your sort of your groups,、mm. your groups of、oh, peeps,、okay. which no, which is good because the, the bunch of them were learning Zhongwen、mm. as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, so they they kind of said, "I can't believe you've got like my two favorite things on at the same time." <laughs> you have Mark Crilly and learning Zhongwen. Yeah, <laughs> like, like you can't get any much better than that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah.、Uh, 而且我们在那个 Instagram 上面有问说你们最喜欢的广播是哪一集，然后大家都说 Mark Freely， yeah, yeah, yeah. 大家都说这个。Really? Oh my god！ 很有名。Yeah, you, yeah, so you have some fans in the in the in the Chinese learning community. 对呀、啊。Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Thanks for、uh, giving me access to the Chinese learning community. <laughs> do, you, do you think there's transferable skills within like language learning and art? Well, certainly with Chinese, with the written、um, characters, I、mm. think there's no more artistic written language on earth, right? Right. So right. if you are a visually oriented person,、uh, like I have always been, you just fall in love with the Chinese characters, right? It's so much more interesting than、uh, the the Roman alphabet, for example. Yeah.、Uh, or, you know, I would say even something like、uh, Korean. 
once you've learned those phonetic symbols, you, you reach a limit, you run out, you know, and it's just a matter of shifting them around and combining them. Chinese, it just seems like it goes endlessly, you know, these new characters you can learn and the fun little stories behind them. Right. And uh, yeah, just like I said, visually, and I think, and, I, and we'll, we'll talk about this, you know, a graphic novel that I'm working on that's set yeah. in Taiwan. But I think walk, walking around a Taiwanese city is a visual feast for the eyes uh, okay. in so many ways, but in particular, all of the signs that are written in Chinese, some of the Chinese character calligraphy, mm. you know, just in one of those big signs by the side of the road, it can be quite beautiful. You know, right, it right. looks yeah. like it's based on real brushwork and, all of that. I, I, I'm a bit um, ignorant when it comes to the uh, the artistic side of of uh, Chinese characters, and not the sense of the stories, but in the sense of you know, I'd have to ask you whether that one is done well. You know, right? Do you, you know, because I, mean? I, I oh. you know, I can see the character, but oh. I don't really, I don't understand whether that one is is, yeah, is okay. like is that yeah. one good or not? Like, yeah. would you say that's a good one? I don't know. It looks kind of. Oh. Yeah, you know, to me. <laughs> Hand like, writing is that good? Like, yeah, like painted by whatever you know, by the wind or something. But. 可是书法、oh, 通常来说都很漂亮。I'm not an expert either. You know, I never really took the,、uh, one of those calligraphy classes or anything. I learned the stroke order, which I expect you did as well,、mm. Tom. Right, and the、mm. direction which each、right. stroke is supposed to go. Right, right, because. If you do it in the wrong direction, I think that shows up on the page, right? If you if you haven't made the line start and stop, and uh oh, I've no,、uh-oh. I've had arguments about this. <laughs> I've had arguments about this.、Uh, this whole thing this is great. He he wrote that. Okay, he wrote your name in the mouth hole. Mouth hole. Yeah. Then he doesn't like it. He doesn't like to follow the rule. The the stroke. He just like this. I don't like following the rule. Then he said, "No, you can't do that." He said, "Same." He said, "It's the same." 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 He said, "It's Yeah, because、yeah, this, this is this is my opinion, right? Because it's the same to me. Like、uh, whether I do a circle this way, you know, or this way, it's、yeah. still a circle at the end of the day, right? To me. But she, I, like, I think、um, your your approach is called the make one. She yeah, yeah, make one. She approach. Yeah. Then he said, "Okay, now you turn around. Then I want to write a word. Then and then you turn back and you tell me this. Did I do it right? Yeah. I said, "Yeah, yeah, 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 You know, it's you know, it's a whole thing. I, 对，看他写字很可爱，看他写字很好笑。Yeah, yeah. 你在干嘛？写好一点。Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 他说没关系，都一样。Yeah. Okay. Look,、like、it looks the same. I'm not going to be a calligraphy artist, but yeah. And that is a whole. 可是说到这个，很多台湾的虎妈，嗯，他们很喜欢，就是在小朋友小的时候，让他们去学书法。Yeah. 书法就是 calligraphy。他们学书法， yeah. 那他们真的长大以后字都很漂亮，这是真的。Uh, uh, 对， so, yeah. 就是虽然他们不会在写功课的时候写书法，但是他们写出来的字就是很漂亮。Really？ 对。From when they're small。对啊。嗯、mm.。而且一定要，很多虎妈就你一定要写写书法，然后坐在桌子前面这样写，然后写一个小时，那小朋友都快发疯了，就、yeah. <笑>不要写。They hit you with chopsticks if you get it wrong. On the hands, your yeah, your mum would yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. That's a real thing as well. Yeah, hit your hands with chopsticks. Get wrong. 对，学那个拿筷子。Yeah. 以前我在拿筷子的时候拿不好，然后我的爸爸就打我的手。Yeah. If you if, you, if she held the the kwaizi wrong, the the chopsticks wrong. 对啊。Yeah. 但是现在还是错啊，就是 I'm still wrong. 所以没关系。那<笑>没关系，就是可以夹就好了。对，可以吃就好。If it works, right? Just、啊、yeah. If it works, don't fix it. 对啊。If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the thing, right? Sorry, Mark. 霸虎，霸虎吗 ？Well, I th-、uh, it's interesting because I think, am I right that in the old days they would try to stop a child from being left-handed? That's right. The devil's the devil's hand. No, 我妈妈就是这样。I know. 我妈妈说，我的瑞瑞她就是写用左手写。我妈妈说不可以。我说为什么不可以？ Yeah. 然后他就哦， oh, yeah. <笑>不说话就嗯。This is our mum trying to enforce our daughter to use her right hand. 对 ，and in front、mm-hmm. of Eula, her mum said 
uh, you know, bushing. Kyrie tried to use her left hand and her mum went, nope, that's wrong. Like, bushing, don't do that. And, her, and then obviously Yula went, why is, why is that wrong? Bushing. And her mum went, oh, bushing. okay. <laughs> because you can't justify it. It's not wrong to be left-handed. They say you use a different part of your brain to mm. use your left. But also, what, what hand are you? Are you right-handed? Right. Yeah, right. Because they say artistic <laughs> people are, are left, but it's got to be, that's just wrong. I'm right-handed. <laughs> Although my art's digital, so maybe it's different. Yeah. Um, where were we? You, where were we? I've lost <laughs> now. <laughs> calligraphy. Yes, <laughs> calligraphy. So uh, you never did calligraphy class, but you did say before the podcast that you had a, a technique for writing characters that you used that mm. is an interesting way to learn, perhaps? Well, uh, here was my approach, and I wonder if you've talked to anybody who decided to do this. Right. When I was studying Chinese characters, you know, they'll start you with the simple... Um, parts of words right so they'll show you how to write new right the, the woman <laughs> and the heights of the z, right for child and then you put those together and it's how right you know and they'll tell you a nice little story about oh well, a mother and a child and that's good and that's why you know and you uh, that sort of approach is a natural way to start yeah right but eventually you move on and i found that um you know, they stopped teaching you to break these characters down sometimes and just mm. you try to memorize it as a series of lines. Now, what I did is I took a book that had the maybe one or 2000 most important characters. Mm. And I went through with, a, with my pen and I started to try to identify every part of a character, no matter what. And eventually you get to a, point, a time where you can't assign meaning to, uh, to an individual piece of a Chinese character. But I refused to let that get in my way. And so I started to come up with names, for these individual formations, you know. Oh, wow. What I was trying to do is kind of come up with an alphabet of Chinese characters because I wanted to understand what lines are possible, what lines will you encounter in a Chinese character versus strokes and formations that simply don't exist? Right. Right. And I thought that that was helpful um, going through in a kind of almost obsessive way. And I think I might've sent you a file of this last time that showed me sort of analyzing the characters and breaking them down into their individual components uh, and I would advise anybody who really wants to go, you know, deep into the characters at least once, try doing that, try going through and, and, and figuring out what are the components of Chinese characters. And there are, you know, there pro probably are hundreds of them mm. that are at the root of the thousands of characters that you eventually need to learn. But I found it very helpful to, uh, to try breaking it down and try to understand because eventually by the time you get to the end of that process, you know, the direction in which lines will go, you, you know enough that even when you look at a scribbly thing written on a note where it's really hard to decipher what it is, you can guess, well, it probably represents this component that I've memorized, uh, you know, over my studies. So it's, it's kind of a visual thing. It's hard to describe on a podcast, but um, I think it really is helpful to, even to the point of making up names for things, for the individual components. Uh, and I would take things that looked like half of another character and say, okay, I'll call this the half, I don't, you know, By lid, right, right, right. whatever, okay. or, or roof, you know, this is half a roof or mm. something like that okay. to, to identify it as a thing that makes sense to me, you know, in my brain that, that, that gets glued into my head as a certain thing and not just this random abstract series of lines. So, so how, how would you, how would that help you? I, I understand the visual aspect, but how would that help you build a word? So let's say you had like a, a half roof and then you have a pancake and a, a, a banana tree, a banana tree, right? But they're all together, right? How would that help you build a word? 
You know, how would you help me do it? From- it's not so much about building the word as being able to look at a new word that you've never seen before mm-hmm. and at least grapple with it on some level and say, okay, well, I've seen that part of it before. And that part in my mind is the sort of um, wall radical. I think they used to word radical. Did you see that in your studies, Tom, of Chinese that they used to word radical? Yeah. 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 And so I would, you know, at the beginning, you're doing that all the time, right? And they'll say, this is the language radical, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so any word that you see that has that on the left hand side is probably related to writing or books or whatever. Right. And then there's the fish radical, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you see that on the left hand side, you're, Oh, this is probably some kind of seafood, right. Or something Mm -hmm. like that. Right. Right. It helps you look at a menu, right. To be able to at least you can break off that part of it and say, yeah, well, this is probably some (laughs) kind of fish, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I, so that sort of basic approach that I think everybody starts with, I just carried it on to a kind of obsessive, ridiculous extreme of just refusing to ever stop breaking these characters into their component parts. Yeah. How far did you get? I think I got through the whole book. I mean, uh, I, it, like I said, I think this book had 2000 characters mm-hmm. and I think I went through every one of them and, and assigned some sort of meaning to every component part. And did you record those components and put them in a book and then sell them to the millions? <laughs> because you should have. <laughs> if you didn't. <laughs> but there's some kind of, there's a method there, right? To the madness. There's a method there somewhere and methods can sell, you know? If it works for one person. Yeah. 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 猜猜看这是什么中国字对像比如说我说有一个人在树旁边睡有一个人在树旁边这是什么中文字有一个人在树的旁边请问这是有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有
变来的。嗯，对啊，是那个吗？一个话，透明吗？不是，那是 transparent。嗯，他说透明的，那是 transparent。This is you, you just you just open a can of worms here, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I'm learning because、uh, I, I have no idea. I've never had to say the word hieroglyphics in my life. So、uh, for for in Chinese, 在这里啊，相信文字。Oh, okay. Uh, 相信文字 ，OK， 相信文字。嗯 ，interesting. Well, I think Chinese is is the only language that was like the Egyptian hieroglyphics that survived all the way into the modern world. Right. Right. I was surprised that there were a number of different languages, written languages, that were a little bit like that, trying to just draw pictures of things and so forth. Right. Right. And now, and now, China itself's gone simplified. They've、mm. kind of lost some of the story behind because、mm. you know Taiwan is the only、yeah. one I think left, or, or one of the only places left with traditional. I also Hong Kong. I see you trailed off there because you don't know. I 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 don't 呃，中文字是看繁体字， oh. 但是我觉得很有趣的是，因为在香港他们是讲广东话， yeah, 他们是讲 Cantonese，, Cantonese、yeah. 然后他跟我讲一个秘密 ，a secret， 很很有趣，就是在香港的学校，他们教你看中文字，但是你说的是。完全不一样的语言 ，right? So they teach you Chinese characters, but you speak Guangdong Hua. You speak Cantonese. 然后我就说，那你去学校学中文干嘛？就是为什么要在学校学中文？他说，这就是一个 education，、really、这就是一个教育，就是你还是要看。嗯、然后，但是他们他们写的跟说的是完全不一样。嗯、那他们说的写不出来、嗯、，you cannot write what they say， 不行。Yeah. 好有趣哦。<笑> The the written language is one of those things that holds、uh, China together, right? Because I think you do have a lot of languages that are radically different from the Mandarin、uh, pronunciation to the point where you can't understand what they're saying. But at least everyone can read the same newspaper, right?、Mm. And like India, for example, has completely different written languages. Right. Right. Right, so and they end up leaning on English as the language that unites people from different parts of the country. Yeah, yeah. Right, in terms of、uh, reading and writing.、Um, but I do think I was going to say a minute ago, Taiwan really has done a global culture a favor by holding on to these traditional characters because it does make you realize that if Taiwan hadn't done it, and I don't know if there's any other place that. That uses them,、uh, it might have been lost forever. Is it? Many people hate it. We talk about artistically. I just think artistically, a lot of these simplified characters just are not beautiful.、Mm. <laughs> they're they're convenient. This is the thing about simplified, right? It, you're right. It's simplified. It's, it's yeah, it's convenient. It's easier to remember. The beauty. Of、yeah. those old characters. Now there are some, I have to say, you know, traditional Chinese characters that are just absurdly complex, and you can't believe that anybody actually writes these things out. What's that one? Huh? Do you remember that that Chinese character? I mean, I have this like this character is just insane. Like, there was that one, the hardest character you can draw. You showed it to me once. You said it's like a it's like a joke word or. Oh, 不是，是因为我们哦，对，新年快到了，就是中国新年快到了。Mm. 那我们会写春联，就是叫 Spring Couplet 春联。Uh, 对，然后对，那这个春联有长的，然后也有小的这种 like square shape 的春联。Oh, yeah. 对，那我们很喜欢写一些很吉祥 lucky 的字。那通常他们会把一句话，那这一句话四个字变成一个字。嗯，哦、oh, ，I see。所以，比如说我讲一个“招财进宝”，“招财进宝”的意思就是，呃，他们会 to wish you， 呃，有很多钱进来。So this year, 有很多钱哈，那叫招财进宝。那他会把“招财进宝”这四个字变成一个字。It's four, four characters. 然后看起来就是。哦、oh, ，Yeah， 这样这是什么？ Oh, oh. 然后对，它就变成了一个字，然后写在那个春联上面。Yeah, crazy， 所以你看到这个字，就等于看到四个字“招财进宝”。嗯，很酷啊！现在就是我们还有这个也是啊，就是
。Biang 吗？这个我不知道。Yeah, this is Biang. Oh, Biang. 我没有人用过这个字，这是最难的单字。Biang.、嗯、Now, Jorge, you I'll, I'll send this to you.、Uh, he needs to Google that. Biang. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's there's a character mark called Biang. Uh, which is、uh, just click on like a chat or something. I'm just gonna see.、Yeah, I wanted to send it over. But I, it's your okay, computer. Okay, okay. Use that. 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 Knife,、uh, heart, plus other radicals. Oh, you, you can show you. Yeah. Give Crazy, 看一下 Okay. This word. Can you see this? Wow. What? This is what? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just、wow. nonsense, though, isn't it? 我不知道这是什么意思哎。I don't know. It means horse moon knife. Again, my approach: you would not feel completely dismayed. You could at least start to break it down into its component parts. Right. So, you, so yeah, I highly recommend that. Yeah. So you would take something like that, and it, you know, it contains horse and it contains heart, and、um, you,、yeah. you 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 would then break. So you take those components out, and you think, okay, I know that one, then that one, this one, but they themselves are made up of,、uh, you know, a Whatever your you know shoe, whatever your your code words are for it, right? Yeah, we can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'm、yeah. trying to think. I mean, at a certain point, I I I'm not assigning a meaning to an, one individual stroke, probably, right? But if、yeah. there's a group of like two or three, right,、uh, that I see again and again, and that's the process of going through. If you go through two thousand characters, you eventually start to recognize. Oh, okay, yeah, I've seen these three yeah. together in yeah. this way. Yeah, yeah, there's repetition. It's getting more and more simple. Yeah, it gets easier. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, you're obsessed with it. You will become more and more simple. Yeah, when you just get hooked, Yeah, the basic can, idea of what a、yeah. Chinese thing is supposed to be. So I had this photo of a、um, street in Taiwan somewhere that had some advertising signs for a shop or a business or something like that. Yeah, and on the sign it said "Kala OK," right,、oh. with the "Kala" and then the "O K" from the English, okay, from okay. the Roman. And so I thought, I wonder if my wife Miki can read this. And I said, so look at this. Can you guess what does that say? <laughs> and she had no、what? idea. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay, and she says, what is that? And I finally told her, Kala, okay, Kala, okay, right from the Japanese.、Yes. Uh, so it was sort of funny to realize that this idea of mixing in O and K is maybe a sort of a Chinese style、uh, invention of. Of you know, there in that case, a word that is literally being split into the Chinese side and the、hey. Romanized English, English side. side. Yeah, because 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 In Japanese, also comes from orchestra. You know, orchestra. They're taking it from an English word. Wow, how you feel? What I think Americans or English people who, or whoever did it really blew it when they started pronouncing the word kara okay because everyone says karaoke. Karaoke, yeah. If you look at it, what is the re kari oki? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense at all because it's spelled K E R A, right? Right. So it's so frustrating to me that people say karaoke、yeah. when just reading the written word it doesn't make sense as a pronunciation. There's a whole bunch of <laughs> problems with English. Like I, we we just recently, like for example, the emphasis on different words that we use in English. That when you're learning English, 
it confuses the hell out of you. Like I think one of our hangout tiers mentioned one content, nay wrong. Yeah. And content. Like I'm content <laughs> with you know, yeah, yeah. having someone, you know, that's kids. Like Chinese, that's that's sort of I use that as an example for the Chinese tone. Oh, the tones, right? Yeah. Do I, yeah. Yeah. Content, content is yeah. a really good way of helping Westerners understand how the tones work. Uh, yeah. uh, in Chinese. Yeah. Um, record but, and record. Exactly. We've got just a few of them. Yeah. Japanese has that as well. That's, I think we're I don't know if I'm doing this right, but hashi and hashi, one of them is bridge, a bridge over a river. Right. And the other is chopsticks. Quite. Wow. I don't know. We have a few of them. But of right. course, Chinese, all that way. Right? And then <laughs> every single you learn, you've got to, you know how this goes, right, Tom? You're, you're learning the word, but you're also trying to glue that tone onto it at the same time. And, yeah. and you'll lose tone, you know, if you don't use it enough. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, know, I yeah. know the basic pronunciation, but I can't remember the tone. Right. Yeah. So, and then you, you have to clutch onto uh, context. <laughs> Cause if you don't, you know, they have to know what you're talking about. Cause yeah. if you get it wrong, if you just say it out outright and you get the tone wrong, yeah. it could be mean something completely different. So yeah. as long as you're within context, usually it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, even if, I, I, can I ask you guys a question about something related to this yeah. story that I'm working on? Yeah, please. Dang, dang. I have, I'm working on this scene, you know, it takes place in Taiwan and this guy, the, the main character goes into this um, electronics store and I have a memory that sometimes in Taiwan in restaurants or different businesses that you could sometimes see a sort of very small altar um, hanging on the wall with like incense and stuff like that. Like, little fl plastic flowers or whatever. It's like it, it, it represents a, like a miniature version of going to the temple mm -hmm. where you do bye bye and so forth. Am I misremembering that? Or does that sometimes exist where like inside a restaurant up on the wall near the ceiling, there might be a small little shrine of some kind that you could, that the people that own the restaurant mm will light incense for, or am I yeah. misremembering? Yeah. Incense? Your mom? Yeah. So I think, I think what it is, is like, I mean, it's like a little shelf yeah. attached to the, like our equivalent would be like having a cross up on the wall somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Like a representation of the, oh. of a temple or like religious, it's a religious, they're religious owners, for example. So they might have some kind of symbol of their religion up on the wall. And in this case it would be incense and like a little shrine thing. 我知道在警察局会有。Okay, so like... 有警察局会有in-police oh, station, station. 因为他们有一个神,他们需要拜一个神。我忘记是什么神了。还有gangster也是。Gangsters. Gangster office,他们也有一个...也不是shop, yeah. it's because they own the temples usually. 不是不是就是他们自己的家或者自己的一个办公室他们就也不是一个shelf他是整个很大的桌子就是那个我们叫他我们叫他神桌的god table Okay, I'm probably misremembering from other places I've been, and I may have to redo this scene. Here's <laughs> one. <laughs> what about the? Um, isn't there the uh, like a little statue of a happy Buddha that sometimes might be sitting on the counter near the cash register? I tell you, yeah, I tell you, what, yeah, I tell you what I do say. Yeah, I tell you what I do say. Yeah, and the cat. That cat reminds me of Japanese style. I wonder if the, those two are related. But I think I'm going to have to go back and redo this idea of the wall side shrine. I'll <laughs> replace it with the happy money Buddha statue. I don't see why they wouldn't, though, if the, the owners of the business were religious, why they wouldn't have something on the wall that represents the I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll, later on, I'll email you yeah. the, the scene. It's just this brief moment where the kid looks up and sees one of these small. Now, I looked on the Internet for reference and I did. 
I found some things that looked a little like what I was remembering, but I didn't find exactly what I was remembering, which made me suspicious. <laughs> that it might not. Right, right, right. I don't think I have seen this. But for okay. some reason, I thought that restaurants in particular, oh. and maybe it's Japan. Maybe it's Japan that I'm thinking, where they have it's like a shelf style miniature altar where. Um, is, it impor- is it important narratively that a character sees this little shrine? <laughs> No, no. It's just supposed to be a little taste of, of uh, as, as he goes around Taiwan, he periodically sees things that he would never see back home. Right, because you, you see them all the time in people's houses, like these things. Which God? But there's so many. God's. Well, so. while we're on this topic, because there's yeah. a much bigger scene where I have, he goes to uh, an actual temple with this uh, young woman that he's met. Mm. And she, part of what she's doing is she's got a box or a big bag of the, um, how do you say star fruit? The star fruit? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yang Tao. Yang Tao. Mm. Yang Tao. Um, she's, She's going around delivering small bags of these to uh, relatives, and he's along for the ride. And I thought at one point she has to go to the temple to do the bye bye, and she's going to maybe put one of these yang tao, the star fruit, on a plate as like offering. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was going to ask you about some of these rituals involved with because I got to get the details of this right, you know, yeah. and. When you when you take something like that, do you leave it there behind, or do you once you're done with your bye bye, do you pick it back up and take it with you? Oh, 好，所以就是一开开始是 in the beginning 是你去拜拜的时候，如果你没有带水果，你没有带饼干 ，but you you go there for praying， 他们会有一个小小的地方让你去 to put coins into the box， 那你可以自己拿饼干、水果，拿完之后呢， oh. 呃。你要去到 the bye bye place， 他们会有很多的盘子、mm. ，the red one， 很多的 plate， 很多的盘子，一定要、uh, 一定要把东西放在盘子里面， uh, 然后再放在桌子上，然后拜拜完之后，然后还有 to burn the money， 烧纸钱， yeah. 全部拜完之后，再拿着这个盘子，然后跟 the main god 说谢谢，就是跟他就是再拜拜一次。Uh, 然后带回家，然后要带回家吃，就是就是吃那个平安。啊、uh, okay. so、，You do take it back with you at the end。要，一定要，因为它是平安 ，safety。Now, 是 is it, ，Is it believable that someone could bring their own fruit from their own tree or something like that？ 可以啊。Now you have to say yes, otherwise you have to redo the whole thing. <laughs> But very often the bye bye uh, experience, the praying at the temple experience, begins with these these two wooden blocks. Yeah, yeah. Right, and you sort of drop them on the floor yeah, yeah. if they look in a certain way, yeah. and then you go to yeah. get these the uh, the stick that has a certain number on it. Right. Yeah. Now, you know about how do you select that stick? Do you just sort of feel around and pull one out, or is there some special way of how that one is chosen for you? Uh, 好，所以你要先问，你要先跟神明讲你的问题，然后问完之后，对，问完以后，然后你要丢那两个东西。Yeah. 丢了之后 ，if it's in the like one down, one up， 这样子才是可以。Yeah. That means the God allow you to to choose one. 那如果是 the same side。不行，就是你还要再问一次。好，然后你就到了那个。Okay. So let's say the girl say， 好，你去拿。然后呢，他就会有个桶子，那你要这样子，冲冲冲冲，去 mix it， 冲冲。然后冲完之后，你就拿一个起来，然后再放下去。Shake it a little. Now, are you looking to see if one of them pops out a little more or something like that, or or is that not related in terms of which stick you choose? 有些人 ，some， 我记得好像有些人他们的方法不一样。The way is different， 对不对？有些人是这样， okay. 然后一根比较长 ，the longest one，、yeah. 那就是那一根。So they'll take that one.、Uh, okay. 
Okay, uh, the other way is 你自己选 对, Just, okay, okay, so this, okay, great. <laughs> so that's good to know. Yeah. Well, you're helping me a lot with this uh, scene, and you will eventually see it in the uh, yeah, in this in the story. Yeah. Can you have a cameo in that scene? <laughs> Just, I think I'll draw Eula as one of the gods oh, in, nice. in the temple that they're praying to. Yeah, praying yeah. to the Eula god. Oh, that, that would be perfect. You know, it, it, let's say, for example, because I know that like a student who wants to do well on their exams is going to go and pray yeah, yeah. for success on their exams. If a, per, if a person's about to take a flight to another country, are they going to go and pray to a particular god for yeah. safety? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. 但是我会说, Your mom did, right? 对, yeah. Uh, yeah. And when you go to that specific one, you do specific thing. But you have to pray all the God. Otherwise, they'll get jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a really true thing. So yeah. when we traveled to the UK a, a number of years ago, mm. her mom said, you're coming to the temple. And we were like, uh, so awkward. A little, bit, a little bit awkward. I'm not sure. She said, you're coming. You're coming to the temple now. So we had to go. Bye, bye. Yeah, and lots of incense. And then we had to, you know, everyone, there were a lot of people were praying. Uh, she took us to the, 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 the God you're talking about, actually, the God of travel sort of thing. Yeah. I was I was asking Ed the question every time, like, what does this one do? Like, what's this one do? What does this one do? <laughs> and I saw the one who does the travel yeah. and also Kung Fu. Do you know who, do you know who the, um, the if you were going to pass your exams, do you know which God you'd pray to? And you know the name of this person. I don't know. I don't know any of this stuff. Confucius. Ah, oh, right. Confucius. Confucius. Yeah, Confucius. Probably the most, well, probably the, possibly the most famous in the West, I would say. I think so. Right? Confucius. 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 然后就特别的跟他讲，而且你要讲说我的名字是谁，我住在哪里，我要去哪里，这样子。But mm. it's, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because there is a gangster god, and we mentioned him earlier. Now the gangster, I can't believe he's that. called the gangster god. Why would there be one of those? I don't know. Talk to me. 我不会，不是。解释。等一下，好，我要先给你看这个这个神明，你就会知道为什么就是。so a, a lot of these gangsters in Taiwan actually have this god tattooed on them. Really? Wow. Oh. Him. Yeah, yeah. He's like a warrior god, right? 对, this, this guy. Uh, okay, yeah, I think I've seen that. He's got a guy in your comic. His face is red, and he has a very heavy sword. So they are our heavy sword. Our heavy sword gangster, they will pray to this god. So these gangsters will pray to this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much for your help with the added authenticity that I'm going to have. And I, thought, I could have you here all day with me asking questions related to the stories. So we, hey, pleasure. We, like we, we said, said it. Yeah, yeah. We said it in the first one. Yeah, right. So it's been 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. How quickly does that go? Wow. You know, Shoots past. Um, okay, so I've highlighted a couple of questions that we, we didn't answer last time that you mentioned before we started. Uh, one of them was question three, which was how has failure or apparent failure set you up for a success? And do you have a favorite Han Zui Xiu Han? Well, I thought, again, with all of these questions, I try to spin it back towards Taiwan. So I thought right. I would tell you about something sort of not a complete failure, but a, a near success that didn't pan out, that didn't lead to the success that I thought I was going to get. Right. And that sort of an interesting story. You know, I was teaching at the YMCA in Taiwan in Zhanghua, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember going to a bookstore. At this time, I, you know, was just a humble English teacher. I had never been published. Mm -hmm. And I, I found this, um, you know, English, a, a book that was supposed to help kids learn English, published in Taipei. Mm -hmm. And it had, it had illustrations that I thought were not particularly amazing. Uh, and so what I did is I took copies of my own illustrations and I mailed them to this yeah, publisher in good. Taipei. And I said, you know, These I would love to help you illustrate one of your books. 
uh, you're looking for an illustrator and I live in Zhanghua and I'm, I'd be happy to help illustrate one of your books. Wow. And to my amazement, they actually did call because I didn't have my own phone. I gave the phone number of YMCA where I was teaching. And the woman from the publisher in Taipei did call me. I was there and I had this phone call and she said, yes, we'd love to meet you. You know, did you write in Zhongwen or Ingwen? You said you wrote I must have written in English. I can't remember. I really can't remember this so long ago. Right. But uh, anyway, I set up an interview in Taipei nice. and I actually went up there. This was shortly before I left Taiwan. Mm. And um, the woman, I, I, I went up to their offices somewhere in Taipei, I can't remember where, and she gave me like a job interview. Wow. And she said they had a guy that was illustrating for them that was about to move on oh. and I could replace him. I'm singing. I was like, this is sweet. This, you know, we went out and had lunch together, me and this woman who worked for the publisher. Nice. And I was so excited that this was going to be my big breakthrough and, and I was going to be able to do maybe return to Taiwan and become an illustrator in Taiwan. Oh, uh, and once I got back to America, and I think, again, this was all by way of the mail. I got a letter from this woman who was my connection, the sort of woman that was cheering me on to take this position, saying that she was leaving the company. Uh, oh, no. Kicking the gut. Um, I'll recommend you to the person who's replacing me or whatever. And then pff, it all sort of fell out. You had no relationship with that person. <sighs> yeah. All because the thing is, looking back from the perspective of today, kind of thank goodness I didn't get that job because that was not the way forward for me. You know, I, I needed to get a job in an American publisher mm-hmm. uh, to get to where I am right now. You know, I think that the truth is I would only have gotten so far with a, uh, a publisher in tai, Taipei, probably quite a small scale English instructional book publisher. Right, right. Uh, and so, yeah, when you talk about a failure that led to success, that's one of these things where I look back and think, oh, I was so depressed when I didn't get that <laughs> job. But looking back, I'm like, no, that was that was one of those, you know, every closing door, some yeah. other door opens. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of relief. It's a good thing I didn't get that job. You know, you don't know at the time, though, do you? That's the the. You, yeah. There's no point of reflection. It's, it's immediate impact that you feel, right? Yeah. So you just you don't get that job. You think, ah, oh, shit, I didn't get that job. Mm. I really wanted yeah. that. Yeah. That was the most important to me. Th- I think to me right now. Mm. But then you don't realize yeah. that you know that's gonna. <laughs> How does a job interview go for an illustrated? I can't because <laughs> I I used to work in sales, right? And and the job interviews, but we had like five different interviews, right? You'd meet the VP of sales and you have to go and do a presentation uh, yeah, uh, on what you've done. With illustration, do, what are the, how, yeah, what questions do they ask? Yeah, you, you, yeah, no, you yeah, can you draw? Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> in you go. To <laughs> <laughs> That was kind of like the only time in my life. Uh, well, I did, I did a little of advertising illustration. It's all about your portfolio, really. You're sure. showing what you can do. And if they like what you can do, mm. then they'll hire you. And if it's all based on uh, your capabilities uh, in the drawing biz, sure. but that was, yeah, that was one of the only times in my life where I had a face to face interview um, related to the drawing. But that's the nice thing about drawing, certainly compared to writing is that you've got all this visual stuff here. This is what I do, you know? Right. And I think writers are a little bit envious of that, that like, mm-hmm. Oh man, I have to get someone to sit down and read this whole thing that I wrote. <laughs> it's so it's, it's easier to have someone look at your drawings and say, oh, wow, that's, that works. How, how long did it take you to get published once you moved back to the States? Well, I'll tell you, my real breakthrough, and I'll make this short because this has nothing to do with Mandarin Chinese. How? <laughs> <laughs> but I created this comic book while I was living in uh, Japan, and it was 33 pages long, and I made photocopies of it. And I mailed those photocopies to a list of 10 different comic book publishers. This was in like 95. And one of them in New Jersey really loved my story. And that's basically all it took. You know, I had proven by way of these photocopies that I had a concept I could draw Mm -hmm. and I had written, I had a fully written story that was ready to be published. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
Yeah, they they replied amazingly. We want to publish this, and we want to invite you to turn it into a series. Nice uh, comic book series, and that was like and yes. he, and here's some money. <laughs> and here's some money to do the thing you've always dreamed of doing, and yeah. Within months, I had shifted from this sort of part-time advertising uh, work to a full-time writer illustrator of comics. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 这种东西都是要找伯乐啦。伯乐的意思就是找一个就是真的会欣赏你、喜欢你的东西的人。所以只要你做的东西有一个伯乐他喜欢的时候，你当然就会开始。You'll be successful. 对。yeah. I think there's a mix, isn't there? Because you you have to you have to be have talent, I guess, or you, or you at least have to. Talent's the wrong word, probably. Because uh, I think talent can be learnt. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think you must agree yeah. with me because you have a channel dedicated to teaching people how to draw. So you must <laughs> agree with me a bit, right? <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, once a teacher, always a teacher, right? I was teaching English in yeah. Taiwan and. I've just never stopped. I'm always trying to teach people something. Okay. You can. I mean, you can you can be bad at drawing and get good at it. You can be bad at learning Zhongwen and get good at it. You just need to practice yeah, and you know right. to find the well, right. And you need good teachers. You need good teachers. And good teachers. And so that might, this leads me to a good uh, question that we didn't answer last time. Yep. Your question about bad advice. advice. Mm. What bad advice have you got about uh, when it comes to learning Mandarin Chinese? Yeah. Let's see what I wrote down here. I know that you've had people in the past say um, this whole idea of learning a language in 15 minutes a day. Yeah. Is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And I think <laughs> that that is pretty bad uh, when when any sort of business uh, by way of like tapes or, you know, CDs or audio things in 15 minutes a day speak mandarin like a native speaker mm -hmm. in just months or whatever yeah, all of months, that yeah. seems like a scam to me 15 minutes is not enough more, more like 15 hours per day yeah uh, <laughs> that would be true <laughs> progress and, uh the other thing that i wrote down was sort of um rote memorization just sitting and memorizing words in isolation mm. on, on flashcards. Uh, is I think of limited usefulness. I think it's better just be learning phrases and immediately knowing how to to plug these words into phrases. Yeah, you can, you know, you can you can learn the word eventually that you're looking for, like a word for pencil, right? Um, you can show somebody what it is that you're trying to say. Uh, that sitting and like today, I'm just going to memorize words relating office supplies, you know? Yeah. And you've got a list of things like that. I don't know. That doesn't feel like the way to go. I think you really got to get into the, the full sentences, phrases, things people say. Yeah. Um, even memorizing, like I was laughing the other day when I thought about the phrase, mama, who, who, mama, who, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even something like that, way more useful, I think, in your day-to-day -day life in Taiwan than if you've memorized a, a list of words, you know? Right, especially irrelevant. It's I agree with you, and a lot of people agree with you, um, actually. Rote learning is, doesn't usually, isn't usually effective, yeah. and it kills your motivation for learning in the end. Yeah. You know, if, if you're... If you're right, if you're studying things that aren't relevant and aren't interested to, you know, you're not interested in these things, it's going to kill your enthusiasm for learning. Frequency is very important. You yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, somebody maybe who is going to Taiwan and has a specific job related to, you know, yeah. like plastics, plastic factory, that person may <laughs> need to sit down and start memorizing all of these Chinese words yeah. for these particular things, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I don't want to say that memorizing a list of words is in and of itself bad, but uh, it, it just if that's the only thing you're doing, I think you're in trouble because you, you also have to be learning full sentences and, and how it all fits together. The one last thing, and this applies for me to both 
Chinese and Japanese and any language that I've learned is to be real careful about learning uh, rude, impolite <laughs> words. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Right. Because you don't know the full context. Uh, and people sometimes when you're drinking or whatever, people will teach you some sort of word that you don't realize how bad it really is. Yeah, because they think it's funny at the time to teach you that thing and you repeat yeah. it in front of the wrong people. Yeah. Right. I have stayed away from that stuff for almost all of the languages I've learned. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a, a, a bomb that can go off and cause damage. Uh, if you have learned a, a really seriously bad word and you don't know how to use it properly. You right. Know? I, and, and actually Eula has actively avoided teaching me <laughs> particularly bad things. Cause I, during my learning, you know, and still, I, I'm still learning now it, during my learning, like, you know, uh, path, path. Uh, bad language has never really played a part in it, obviously. Cause it's all, you know, teachers, it's all yeah. pr professional Damn. language, uh, you know, yeah. day to day, whatever. But so um, my only real, uh, exposure to rude language is out in the street. Uh, Cause I'm on the street all the time with, <laughs> with the gangsters uh, <laughs> on the street uh, yeah. Yeah, at the Seven Eleven and stuff, you know, I'm buying some things and I hear a guy say something around, right, he says a rude word and I'll, I'll go to you like, oh, you look, you know, this guy was shouting at this other one. I heard mm. this word over and over again. Is, what does that mean? Mm. And then she'll tell me, but she'll never really directly say, oh, by the way, this is, means this and this is this. And yeah. 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 除非就是如果有人真的是很凶的在跟你讲话的时候。Which is odd, and I tell you why, because I'm it, 我是英国人, I, I actually swear in my own personal life like a sailor. <laughs> um, it's just, it comes natural to me. I speak, if I speak to my dad and my sister or stuff, we, we swear quite a lot. It's just like, it's a thing. But not in a nasty way, yeah. just kind of like an affectionate kind of way. Uh, so, and it's odd, but in Zhongwen, I don't, I just don't swear. But also, have you not found that some of these words don't, they don't mean as much to you? I don't know how you and your wife are with, with Japanese, like when you speak, what's, what's the Japanese and English together? Japan. Lish. Japan. Japan. Lish. <laughs> Japan. Lish. Japanese. <laughs> yeah. When, when you speak with your, with your wife in Japanese or you mix the languages, do, does she ever say, or do you ever think that when you're saying a word, it doesn't mean the same thing as it would to you in English? Like if you say a, uh, now that's always an interesting conversation. The, the words uh, mm. and the different, Aids of meaning, and we particularly love to talk about words that don't seem to exist in the other language, right? I know a lot of these in Japanese. I've probably forgotten. I'm trying to think in, in Chinese. There's like, oh, well, here's one thing. Did we talk about this before? I love how in Chinese you can say how to and uh, nan to, mm -hmm. right? and you've got the sort of set phrase, right? And how king. Mm -hmm. how ting, how nan ting, nan ting. right? Uh -huh. how you think about it in English. Yeah, right. You, delicious. The opposite of delicious, there almost is no word in English. It's sort of like foul tasting. Mm -hmm. right? You, you have to resort to combining because you if you say disgusting, that's not related to taste only, no, right? That can right. be Yeah, 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 yeah. Both Chinese, both Chinese and Japanese have a uh, a particular word, it seems to me, related to these uh, opposites of like tasting good versus tasting bad. Yeah. And when I noticed that English didn't really have a proper opposite for delicious, I was really sort of surprised. So I was like, hey, that's like a <laughs> gap in our language. You know, that's, that's a really useful word, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. It, it, and it takes a another language learner to let you know these things. I do it to you all the time with Dongwen. Like, oh, did you know this word sounds like this one, you're, oh, oh, it, oh yeah, it does. Yeah, you're right. It does sound like just like, yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. 没错。好吃。难吃。<laughs> uh, for some reason, I like that. That use of non means difficult, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Nan ting. <laughs> difficult, to it's difficult to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it's, really, it's sort of funny in English, but combining those two. That's a really good yeah. point. Uh, like there's a rule. Now, rule, you know this rule, it's very can apply to many, many different words. Yeah, like good, bad, and bad is the same. 
When I was studying Chinese, I always felt that it, it was like this building block kind of language. And, and as you learned the words and you sort of threw them in, you tended to be all right. You know, that it, like, well, the other day, and we haven't mentioned this yet, but I, I wrote this brief piece of dialogue in Chinese and I needed to get it kind of proofread. So I turned to you guys, right, Eula? And I showed you these seven or eight sentences that I had written in Mandarin Chinese. And the one, I'll tell you, the one that I was a little unsure of is that the one character had bought a new piece of luggage and uh, the the boyfriend character asks her in Chinese, Uh and is this something you've just bought? Is this this newly bought? And I had to stop and I thought to myself, is that actual Chinese or is that something that I just came up with? Uh, And that's why that was one of the things where I'm like, if I'm wrong about this, Eula is going to be able to tell me, no, that nobody says that you just started saying that and people understood (laughs) what you were trying to say. (laughs) You're right. Um, But you didn't correct me on it. So apparently that is She's something that people... She is very gentle though. I don't think she'd, she'd ever say like, you did that. It was you. You made that. Up. No, <laughs> I... no, it was all it was good, good, right? I think it's just a bridge. 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 It's uh, you know, yeah. fresh meal, this is uh, yeah. is yeah. it's not just fresh, it can, well, not just new, this is like something you, you, you just did. Yeah. 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 People studying Chinese need to be appreciative of that. I think it really is a language that is very forgiving in a way that w- once you learn a bunch of words and you start to put them together, mm. it, it tends to be okay. You know, it tends yeah. to work out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my, my microphone keeps turning yeah. off. Uh, there was one last thing <laughs> that we didn't answer last time. Mm. I'm determined to do this. this How? Okay. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure there will be a, a, a part three because, you know, we love you. Uh, but but um, it was question 10. When you feel overwhelmed or unfocused or lose your focus temporarily, what do you do? So I think that was the last question oh, that we didn't cover. Um, this is a, that's a great question. I think my answer is probably similar to what a lot of other people may have said to you. Right. But for me, uh, especially you need to get out of the house, get out of your home, go out into the world. I think in particular, if you go to some new place that you've never been to before uh, and start exploring, I think that, that that feeling of getting out of your routine and getting into a new location mm-hmm. can really help you out in terms of uh, you don't feel so trapped, right? Like uh, when you're overwhelmed, it is a feeling of like, there's no way out of this, Yes, you know? And I think so long as you're in your own location, staring at these same walls and so forth, psychologically almost, it adds to that feeling of like, I'm stuck, you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm exploring anyway. And, but you'll find, you know, that even within a mile or two of your own home, mm-hmm. there probably is some street that you never went down before. Yeah. There mm-hmm. probably is, some little neighborhood you haven't been in before. And for me, that always helps to, to just get out. And, you know, uh, the Japanese have a word for this, and I don't know if I can remember it. They talk about, like, bathing in the green of uh, the forest. Uh, and that going out among the trees and so forth, that's another thing that just, you can't help it. The stress level drops, right? As soon as you're su- surrounded by trees and nature. 真的,真的。就是一大自然可以带出真实的你。yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, I agree with you completely. I, I think nature, there's a, something oddly primal, uh, like it, there's, a, there's something instinctual in us that, that nature kind of completes. I, I, I can't describe it really. We, we live in a, yeah, we live in a, Cheng, a, a Chengshu a city. Oh, the English left me <laughs> then. Uh, we live in a, we, that was weird. The, um, we live in a city 
and we have done for years and years. And we, you know, really get out to the countryside. Yeah, sort of thing. Um, so when you do, it's just such like, it's like a, a, a big, oh, God. Yeah. Like, it's very it feels like you belong there. It's a weird yeah. feeling. I feel. It's on top. So we have so much of these mountain trails and stuff. And I have so many happy memories of, of going off to do those, you know, hikes. Yeah. Did you ever do monkey mountain in Kaohsiung? I don't think I did. Monkey mountain. Monkey mountain. Mm. Yeah. You, would have, Shoshan, you would have got your stuff stolen. <laughs> they steal your stuff. The monkeys, yeah. I mean. Yeah. That's why you call it Mandarin monkey. Mandarin monkey, exactly. Hey, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, no, we're different. We're different than those kind of monkeys. Those are naughty monkeys. Uh, what have, kind you of mon- gone, have you guys ever gone to pick uh, strawberries in Taiwan? Not in Taiwan. Pick like strawberries? Well, you don't have any high no, I haven't. Yeah, because I have happy memories of that. That seems like something that would totally relieve your stress to get out because those are always going to be located somewhere out in the farmland, you yeah. know. Uh, but yeah, the, the the mountain trails. I did more mountain. I don't want to say mountain climbing because it sounds like a rock climbing thing, but yeah. I did more mountain hiking in Taiwan than I ever did anywhere else in my life. Right, right. Yeah, there's a bunch. Mm, yeah. There was an old man from Japan actually uh, named Uryu Uryu San. Was he, he was teaching Japanese at the YMCA and he loved to go mountain hiking mm. and invited me this one time. And that was it. He's he knew I, I got my mountain climbing partner in Mark Crilly. <laughs> and right. Four or five times he and I went off to climb the mountains. But never uh, monkey mountain. That's the point. What's it all? We live in Taichung. Well, I, I live in Kaohsiung. Is you with me introduce Shoshan? Otherwise, I don't know if Kaohsiung has Monkey Mountain. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we went, but we didn't. Yeah. Yeah, those monkeys. They're so scary. I have one more question that's related to my story, and it's actually going to relate it. a little bit to you, Tom. Great. The, the, the Chinese, the, the woman, the young woman who's like the main uh, Taiwanese character. Right. She, Yula. <laughs> speaks English fairly well. Right. Okay. She did a homestay in England. And I don't know why I decided to make it England instead of America. <laughs> just, it's maybe a little too, the main character is American, you know, and yeah. I thought if she had went to America, it's just a little too balanced and simple there. Mm-hmm. So I thought how about she did a homestay or something in England and that's how she got to speak English pretty well. Okay. And I thought that she should have a dream of some kind that relates to England and relates to English language that um, she wants to achieve in Taiwan. And I thought, well, what if there's some sort of skill that she could learn in England right. that she could bring back to start her small business in Taiwan? And this is what I've come up with. And you tell me if this seems believable. Right. What if when she was in England on her homestay that they took her for the sort of traditional old fashioned English tea. Yep. With the scones mm-hmm. and the cucumber sandwiches and all of that stuff. And she falls in love with this traditional English tea time. Yep. And she had a dream of in Taiwan starting a little cafe that's like English tea time yeah. in Taiwan. Mm-hmm. Does that seem believable as something that a, a young woman might okay. Dream of doing in Taiwan is like her own business or whatever. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 很多人很多人在台湾，他们就尤其是年轻人 ，especially yeah, the teenage, young, younger people, yeah, the young people， 他们非常喜欢就是开咖啡馆。Cafe, yeah. 还有一种就是 mobile cafe， 就是他们会自己开着车，然后在他们的车上面就有咖啡机，很多的东西，然后椅子、桌子，那他们就会开车旅游，然后到一个他们喜欢的地方，桌子、椅子放下来就开始。Yeah, we've seen a bunch. My cafe, and typically they have a theme. So some of them have been British themed. We went, oh, okay. We went to a, a, a British, a British burger bar the other day. <laughs> with a, with a, I, I say British because it had like 
of his, it had like the queen and stuff on the walls and like, <laughs> but it also had American gas pumps with the word oh, gas pump. We, confused with the theme. we don't do that in England. No. <laughs> we don't do that. So, um, Ganga. petrol, petrol stations. Oh, for letting me run that by you. Cause that, yeah. that, that, that's going to come up with uh, as something that she's, and that's why she's so interested in learning English and, and, you know, I suppose you could probably learn how to do all that stuff authentically uh, in Taiwan if you really wanted to. But I I like the idea of her having a dream of going to England and learning all those skills and so forth and bringing them back. Yeah, that's totally believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't. I may ask you to help me with it involves photo reference. Please. Yeah, we said Uh, that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. well up for it. Yeah. I have a scene where uh, at the side of the road in Taiwan, sometimes there's like a drainage ditch mm-hmm. where the water is flowing on right. the right or left hand side of the road. You know what I'm talking about? It goes down the drain. So all the water drains well, off. It's flowing almost in a very miniature canal kind of a way. Okay. But it's, they tend to cover it over with, uh, metal grates or some things every once in a while you can see that there's there's and it could be maybe polluted and a little bit gross mm-hmm. but am i right in remembering that on some on the sides of some roads in taiwan there's this little water passageway that's flowing is it, uh, it, is it dug deep ground level it's below yeah. ground level is it dug deep right so it's like a yeah so, see because it like might an, West, we would cover these things over completely and nobody can see them. Right. But I know in Japan, and this is again where I feel like I might be confusing Japan with Taiwan. Very yeah, often like you can the see the pool of water. Like this. There we go. Yes. You got it. <laughs> yeah. Is that in Taiwan? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this in, the fish past, in, it. in the past, uh, yes. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe when you were here, maybe yes, but they probably changed it now. But some some places have still got them, rem- like you know, got the remnants of them, and this one's got koi carp in it. <laughs> but that is one. If you can email me, I have a scene in the story where I, I need to have one of those. You want this picture? Um, yeah, I'll email it to you. And we can just pretend, that we'll pretend in this city on this particular road they never got around to covering. I'm sure it. there are towns where they. Yeah, yeah. Area, That's called uh, okay. Shui-go. 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 Uh, I can drink it. Yeah, I can drink it. Yeah. Yeah, the pitch is in your inbox right now. <laughs> Thank you, boy. You guys are saving the day with this uh with this book. <laughs> Acknowledgements and send you copies. What is the process of? Uh, we don't have much time left. We don't have any time left. Um, the process I won't keep you for very long of getting of publishing because you said this might take a very like a long time to because you know we're talking about doing part three at some point and then Eula said, oh yeah, when you publish your book, we'll we'll do another one. And I thought that might be a long time, and you said, yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> how long is a long time? Like how? Well, yeah, uh, this book is probably going to be around 250 pages long wow. of graphic novel storytelling. Wow. And as of yesterday, I've reached around 70 pages in rough form, right? So that puts me a little past a quarter of the way through. Um, uh, but I've got to complete all of that. And I'm working at a rate of around, on a good day, six rough pages per day. Right. So I've sort of mapped it out. And I think within one or two months, I'll be done with the rough version. Now, then I show this to my editor and my editor asks for changes. Yeah. I, and then I have to start all over again and change these rough pages into final pages. Right. Mm. That's when that's when things slow down. And I think I can probably only produce two probably finished pages per day. So again, I start calculating that out. 250 pages, two per day. 125 days. Five or six days a week if I'm lucky. It's going to take a while. Uh, And then once I've handed all that in, it takes a while for them to actually publish it. So um, unfortunately, this we're early days with this project. But it's kind of fun, I think, to talk about it so early on. Mm -hmm. And like this whole 
thing about seeing, like I asked you guys about the, the miniature altar hanging on the wall mm. <laughs> and really good that I have someone like you guys to turn to and say, is this a real yes, memory of yeah. my <laughs> imagining things and i think in that case i am confusing it with some other place i've been right right uh whereas uh at least with the drainage ditches i i, I did remember that as a, as a real it's a real thing uh, yeah. John, well, yeah. yeah there's even one in my grandma's uh bathroom and i was oh, so right. confused when i was young i was like Really? that the shower? The shower water would go down there. Is that the shower? The shower water would go down there. Is that the shower? The shower water would go down there. Is that the shower? The shower water would go down there. Is that the shower? The shower water would go 没关系,你可以真的比尿尿。Okay. <笑> so, yep. Just like that, as you do. <笑> 我没有,我没有。There's another scene in my story in which she takes him to an old traditional Chinese house. Um, and I've been looking at photo reference to try to get the details of this right. But I have memories of seeing these old houses. They're usually one story high. They almost have like a U shape. Do you know what I'm talking? Like a horseshoe shape. Oh, like this. Yeah. Right and left hand side, and there's a courtyard in the middle. Um, you just searching it, right now. I, the question I was going to ask: Is it believable that this uh, sort of teenage girl would have a grandfather out in the countryside? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it believable that uh, she could have a grandfather out in the countryside of Taiwan who has one of those old houses? Yes, this is a very traditional house. It's three sides. They go together. The one So his granddad's his job is what? Is this an expensive house, would you say? No. It's not. I don't, want, I don't want it to be expensive. I actually want it to be a little old and run down and give me that feeling of some of these places I saw in Taiwan really lived in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, I, I talked to you guys about the tea houses. Yes. And how I wanted to do a scene where she takes them to a tea house. That has changed a little since I first thought about it. And now I'm thinking that's what's going to happen at the grandfather's house. And the grandfather is going to make the tea right. for them, maybe maybe in the courtyard or whatever. And he's going to be a connoisseur, the, like a of tea. Yeah, that, that's where we're going to see that whole process of how to, to pour Chinese tea properly. Right, right. Mm. 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 Yeah. 三合院啊, 这是一个很好的, 非常传统的一个, 一个房子, 而且我很喜欢, yeah, nice. Cute. Well, in a way, and this and this speaks to my attraction to both Chinese and Japanese culture. I'm always attracted to this older traditional stuff, right? right. And at a certain point, I realized I was focusing so much on the old old Taiwan <laughs> that I was going to disservice to representing Taiwan if I don't represent the new Taiwan. Right. So I have I've created this character that's like the cousin of the main character and he's i'm going to pour all of like the modern taiwan into him right and be like into rap music and christopher nolan films and you know all this sort of modern western culture kind of stuff and got it so we're going to get some of that into the story you know yeah yeah and i think primarily i i like creating this sort of fantasy of old Taiwan Aww. and everybody lives in the ways and, and yeah, yeah. having and stuff like that. So I got to be careful not to over <laughs> represent that. Uh, I got, it's got to be the real Taiwan, right? Right. Yeah, we still have that. Yeah, we still have that. Haka, Haka culture, Haka Ren, Tamado, Hoyo, Zong, San Huyen. 而且是阿公阿媽一定要阿公阿媽住,然後就會好多很多的grandchildren,他們這些孫子孫女來,然後大家都在這個院子裡面烤肉玩,就好可愛喔。Alright then, we'll, we'll, we'll buy one of those then one day. <笑> 我希望。Alright. 
always have so much to talk about. We definitely got a third. There's a third um, coming, right? And it'll be fun if, you know, I, in, 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 waiting all the way until the book gets published is probably too long, but mm. maybe we wait until I finish my first rough version, you know? Yeah. And then I really, I know what the full story is and we can talk about stuff like relating to that. Yeah. But in the meantime, don't, you know, don't hold back on dropping us a mail and saying, yeah. Hey, does this thing make sense? Or is this, yeah. you guys are saving the day with that kind of stuff. There's <laughs> constantly things are coming up where I'm like, am I getting this right? You know? Mm-hmm. And interesting, even in the age of the internet and Google image search and so forth, there's a limit to how much, like I looked for drainage ditch photos yeah. <laughs> and all I, all I could find were these huge projects by the, the side <laughs> of the highway. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not, not it. what I need. You immediately had it on your phone. That was great. Yeah, it's in my term. childhood. Yeah, it's such Oil. term though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you get you're absolutely. Uh, just if you don't get us an email straight away, drop us on Instagram because it's that, yeah. that can't fail. But sometimes the messages go into Damn. the wrong box or whatever. Mm. Bizarre. Anyway, thanks for coming. Thank you. It's been it's uh, over an hour now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go on. You're so smart. This this was so much fun, and I'm looking forward to to sharing it with all of my. Uh, you know, YouTube viewers and so forth. I heard they had a lot of positive feedback from them. You know, like you were saying, they mm-hmm. really enjoyed, um, listening. you know, listening to the podcast and, and hearing about all of these old stories and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been good. In general, mm-hmm. good. Let's go. Um, thank you very much for coming on again. We're going to do part three for sure. We'll organize it uh, when you're, well, as soon as you're done, just let us know or nearly done with your first okay. rough draft you let us know and then we'll get okay. on we'll be hassling you anyway and I'm sure you'll ask us a bunch of questions <laughs> cool you'll never get rid of me that's Yay. good that we d- hey look we're friends now so that's what we do alright hello ma hello 有任何的问题呢你们想要写信告诉Mandarinmonkey的话呢请你写信到 chatchat at mandarinmonkey.com For anything else you can find everything at www.mandarinmonkey.com Thank you Mr. Crilly and we'll see everybody next time Thanks for bringing Thank back the Taiwanese old culture memory yeah. <laughs> Okay <laughs> Bye 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 bye